Hello and welcome back to With It. On today's show, we are gonna go over uh, buoyancy in a way, but we're gonna do it two different ways. We are gonna go over quicksand and talk about the dangers of it and you know people that have passed away when they got stuck in it. And we're also gonna cover salt and water and the buoyancy of that. I hope you'll stick around, it's gonna be an interesting show. Hello, thank you for joining. Um, today we're going to go over quicksand. Um, something that was, you know, some terrible thing you'd run into. It was in most of the shows when I was growing up, with, whether it be a cartoon would use it, uh, Gilligan's Isle would use it, it would be in a lot of movies. Um, they would usually show people disappearing in it. Show the hands the last thing you'd see and then they disappear into the quicksand. Uh, quicksand is a funny thing in itself as far as the way that it's put together that what happens is you get water that's trapped. So it's trapped by a, usually a solid surface down below the sand and that keeps water from basically draining. But the water has to have an upward pressure, I do believe I've read, to be able to cause quicksand and have it set the way that it does to where when you step in it, all of a sudden you displace all that water and sand and you can sink into it. And the more you move, the more you're gonna sink. Um, it's, a, it's an odd thing. The good thing about it is, is that most of the people run into it um, along rivers, uh, along beaches. You, can end up getting stuck in it and then if you start wriggling around you can go deeper and deeper and then you do have a, a, a problem to where you'll pass away. Now as far as quicksand itself most of it is about three feet deep at the most so you're talking waist deep. Most of it's that deep. Um, where it's deeper and where there's a lot more of it it's usually a lot further underground as you'll see in one of the clips I'm going to put in here it's in foundations below foundations of building like you know 60 100 feet deep um, it's the big deep stuff is luckily down underground but the stuff we run into is usually about a three feet deep maximum so you could fall in it sideways struggle yourself into it and then drown yourself but I don't I haven't seen that that has happened what I have seen is that people go and uh, they'll go to the beach and they'll get stuck and the tide will come in and they drown. Uh, this happens on rivers also. So we're gonna go over a couple of those. Um, but the quicksand itself, if you know how to deal with it, you can get out of it. Um, it's gonna be a lot of work. Let's say you're over your knees in this quicksand, it's probably gonna feel like you ran a marathon by the time you get your legs out of there uh, without help from others. And it's crazy that uh, the amount of force you need to just pull somebody out of it. They say it's like lifting a car. So right now we're going to go into a few of these people that unfortunately got themselves stuck in quicksand. Okay now, January 2012 in Antigua. Uh, Nicola Raybone, she is 33 years old and she is at the beach with, sounds like her husband and a bunch of friends that they went to uh, visit there. They went on a vacation there it sounds like and they're at the beach, they're having a get together and in the evening they all go back home Well, she decides to walk back to the beach and uh, they're all back at the room. She walks to the beach and she suddenly sees that she gets stuck in quicksand and starts sinking. So now she starts screaming for help. Nobody can hear her screams for help. Um, it must have been around dusk. It sounds like it's around dusk that this happens and around 10 o'clock at night somebody notices that she is not back at the room. They start searching for her, and I believe she is found the next morning uh, drowned, stuck in the quicksand. So the tide came in and drowned her because she couldn't get out of there. And it's just sad because nobody had heard her screams. And uh, that's one of the examples of how you can end up passing away, getting stuck in quicksand. You can also starve. You can also have an animal come up. Uh, let's say you're next to a next to a river you get stuck in that stuff up to your knees and all of a sudden some kind of a bear comes out of the woods uh, an alligator comes out of the water you could run into a lot of things because you can't move you can't do anything and you're just a sitting duck 
Um, good thing is, is it's kind of rare to run into it and you'd know it when you step on it because you'd start sinking and you could just step back out of it. Problem is, is when you're in it and you don't notice it and then you start getting a little crazy, a little bit uh, nervous twitching and things like that, that's going to dig you further down in it because we're buoyant enough we can't even sink in it. So we can go down halfway and then we'll just sit there and float. But if you start moving around, you're going to work your way down into the sand because the water's going to move out of the way. The sand's going to take the place and you can get yourself down under there the more that you thrash around. And we'll talk about how to get out of it in a minute. But now Texas, San Antonio River, what year was this? 2015, there was a 50-year-old man that was out on the side of the river on the bank of the river and he got himself into some... Uh, into some quicksand and they found him the next morning face down in the water all the way up to his buttocks in, the, in quicksand so the, both of his legs were all the way in the sand and that's about as far as you're going to make it before your buoyancy is going to kick you back or keep you from going uh, any any deeper but again water comes in and you have nowhere to go and it sounds like the water came in and uh, you know got pretty high on him uh, Tides are, you know, they run up rivers. It pushes up rivers miles. So the water that you see there is not always going to be the water that's going to be there later. And unfortunately for that 50 year old man in Texas in the San Antonio River, that ended up happening. Now we go to 2016 in Florida, a 78 year old man. He uh, survived eight hours before they rescued him. So he got himself into some quicksand. And luckily, eight hours later, he was able to get help and get out of it. I haven't found many other deaths. I have a couple of them, and I'm going to put a bunch, bunch of these clippings in this show so that you can see, you can read for yourself if you're interested in it. Uh, not only the quicksand, but the history of it, and it'll get into the foundation problem with it. Uh, one even says that there was a locomotive that went off a track and disappeared, and they couldn't find it going 50 feet down into quicksand. They still couldn't get at it. So they think that locomotive, the front, uh, the front car, just was eaten by quicksand so i'll put those in there for this but that's the story on quicksand something you really don't want to have to deal with now if you get into quicksand there is a way to get out um like the video of the feet where she's kind of moving her feet around and she goes deeper down in it's kind of the reverse of that where you're kind of making frantic movements you want to make deliberate movements small movements so let's say you're up to your just above your knees in quicksand you want to take one of your legs and move it just to the side you just want to move it to the side and what it's going to do is it's going to pack the the sand release the water and you should have a little bit of room and you're going to have to do this for a long time till you can make it so that you can get your leg out of there you're going to have to just make little deliberate movements small deliberate and you want to move a little bit and then let it set and move a little bit more and let it set because you want that water to drain out of the sand to stop it from going down there and acting like a vice and grabbing onto your leg so deliberate small movements uh, will get you out of it moving around is going to get you further into it so you really have to be calm and that's a kind of a tough thing to do when you can't move um, it's really hard i would imagine if you're up over your knees to even move your leg to the side a little bit but you have to do little increments and make sure that they're, they're deliberate and you get a little bit of movement each time that way you're letting that water sand separate the water flush out of there leaves the sand and you'll be able to push a little bit more and eventually you'll have room to get your leg out at least that's what i get from what i'm about to, the clips that i'll put in here so now that we went over buoyancy of quicksand and the fact that you really can't sink in quicksand we're going to go over uh, some salt water we're going to go over some buoyancy in salt water next uh, water that a body cannot sink in next okay so i've uh Tried to explain this in my shark show um, about bull sharks and fresh water and how they can't be there because they're going to sink. That's the bottom line. Well, parts per trillion, I believe it is, parts per million. I think it's parts per trillion, but uh, parts per million, I think. So we'll go with 1,000 parts per million salt in water is the break point of fresh to salt water. Some of them, you know, drinking water is like 100 parts per million. Whereas uh, the break would be a thousand.
parts per million. So quite a bit more salt than what they consider drinking water. Others have fresh water at 500 parts per million, uh, but I go with a thousand. And then you go into salt water and pure ocean water is 35,000 parts per minute. Uh, so a thousand for fresh water, 35,000 for salt water, for the ocean. And that 35,000 is 35 times fresh water's buoyancy, 35 times heavier water that you can float in. So now there's bodies of water out there that a human body can't sink in. And that's because they have eight times the salinity, the amount of salt that the ocean has. And one of these, the most famous is the Dead Sea. And people go out there and I'll put this little clip in there, a couple little photos in there, but you lay in the water and read a book because you're not going to be able to sink. It looks like you're sitting in a lawn chair, in a re reclined lawn chair. You're just laying there reading books. But the problem with the, the Dead Sea is there's so much salt in there uh, and it's not safe salt because if you're in there more than 15 minutes, the, the salt and the, and, the min and the other minerals in there can cut you. It can cut your skin. So they recommend only 15 minutes to be into the water. And I'm sure if you know you have uh, you're older, I would say that they'd say be in there even less. Uh, so you don't want to end up with lesions and things from salt. It's salt in the wound right there. So <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Um, there's also other ones. What was the name of the other one? Uh, Siwa. The Siwa Oasis in Egypt. This is in a desert. And I have a picture of it here. And that's another one that you can just sit on. But that lay like you're sitting in a lawn chair. You can't sink in that either. And it's salt that holds you up there. But the thing is, is this one's safe. You can be in there as long as you want. And they say swimming is difficult. Uh, in the Dead Sea because of the amount of salt. It's, it's hard to not only sink, a body can't sink there, so you can't kill somebody and toss their body in the water and they'll sink. That's not going to happen there. Uh, I do think you could still drown though. That's what I'm wondering. Can you, can you drown yourself in there and inhale the water and then you're basically all water and I think you might be able to sink. But as far as if you're laying in the water and you're struggling, you're not going to be able to drown because you're not going to be able to sink into the water. So I think it'd be very hard to drown, even though it's very hard to swim there. Uh, this other one, the Siwa, it's safer water. You can be in it as long as you want, and it's beautiful looking water. <laughs> they also have other ones. Uh, there's the, what's the name of the other one? Uh, Jalapio State Park in Brazil. Uh, this looks like a little water hole, and this one's even different than the others because I don't believe it's salt that holds you up. I think it's a fresh water little opening but they have a little river running underneath it and the pressure difference gives upward pressure to the water and you can't sink. So you get the same effect, just not from salt. I think you can be in that as long as you want. It just looks like it's deep in the jungle, at least by the picture I saw, but cool looking body of water. But yeah, salt is what allows a shark fish that are out there, uh, big whales, it allows them to float because there's salt in the water. And you know, these animals, if they got into fresh water, they wouldn't have the salt to be able to support them. The water wouldn't be heavier than the oil in a shark and it would sink. So even though a, you know, a bull shark can keep water in their system, it doesn't help the fact that they don't have any water to keep them from the sea floor. And a lot of the People that I've read, uh, scientists that have looked in it, they said, what do sharks do in fresh water? They sink, just like I say. So I don't think you'll ever run into a shark in fresh water. But I wanted to go over buoyancy of both uh, that scary old uh, quicksand, and then we were able to cover these uh, bodies of water that I think are amazing that you could just lay back and just sit there like you're on a chair. It, to me anyway. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you'll be back in a couple more days. If you find something that ask, makes you ask yourself, what in the hell was that? Please put it in the comments. We'll take a look and see what we can find. See you next time.